Hey everyone, today is another video on the most common triggers for Meniere's disease attacks. And today we're talking about sugar. So if you're still having Meniere's disease attacks, which is vertigo, nausea, dizziness, uh, tinnitus, and hearing loss, your Meniere's is unstable, I think you're going to find this video and the other videos I've made on triggers very helpful. So let's get into it. So why sugar? Why, why is sugar a trigger for Meniere's disease? Well, let's back up and look at uh, what Meniere's disease is. Meniere's disease is also called endolymphatic high drops. Some people like to call it cochlear high drops if it's affecting more the, the auditory symptoms. But the bottom line is you have a swelling from the inside out in your vestibular system in your semicircular canals and your cochlea. And you get crushed from the inside out. And it can kind of wax and wane or ebb and flow and it can be certain attacks can be triggered now again i've got other videos on different triggers we've talked about uh, alcohol we've talked about weather we've talked about hormonal changes we've talked about caffeine and today we're talking about sugar because sugar when you eat simple sugars such as added table sugar or candy or you know sugary drinks it can destabilize that kind of uh, tenuous situation in your ear then that meniere's ear how does it do that well, when you consume sugar, you get an insulin spike, okay? And along with insulin, you get a spike in something called interleukin-6, and that is a cytokine. That is an immune system messenger. So basically, if you had to think about it in simplest terms, sugar is inflammatory, and we all kind of know that, right? And this is something that I work with with all my patients is trying to help them, you know, change their diet and, you know, don't do things that are going to actively every day make them feel bad. And with Meniere's patients, sugar intake is one of the things that we've known for a long time uh, definitely has a role in the flare-ups. Uh, I'll put a link to the, the paper down there, but you'll, you'll hear this term hyperinsulinemia. Well, that's kind of referring to you've got too much insulin floating around, right? And that is, as I just said, that's inflammatory. Now, who has that? Well, people that are diabetic have that. Uh, people that are pre-diabetic can have that. But even people who aren't pre-diabetic, people that just when they indulge in sugar or they indulge in sweets and it makes their symptoms worse, that's telling you that sugar is a trigger. And it's a trigger because it's inflammatory. And that inflammation uh, manifests itself in your inner ear that's already fragile. It's kind of like this. If you can imagine, um, like, you know, you turn your ankle, you twist your ankle, you sprain it and it kind of swell. Well, you can see that swelling, right? You can see it kind of expand. Well, imagine that inflammation happening in your inner ear. Well, that's a encased in bone. There's no place for the swelling to go like it is on your ankle. And so you're, that swelling is going to go where the least resistance is. And so you're going to get crushed from the inside out that inflammation can be flared up by eating sugar. So what should you do with that inflammation? Well, number one, uh, if you're still having Meniere's disease attacks, I would look at my other videos on these different triggers and find out, hey, which of these are my triggers? And you might get lucky just by modifying your lifestyle and diet, but really you ought to be working with someone that can help you track down what else is going on with your immune system. Because really having a Snickers bar or drinking a Coke shouldn't be enough to destabilize your Meniere's ear. If it is, uh, or if you've got multiple triggers at once, you need to be working with someone that can try to help stabilize your immune system. Because the one thing that I've seen over the last 20 plus years in Meniere's patients that make it to me is they've almost all of them have got some kind of immune system problem. Sometimes they have an inflammatory problem from being insulin resistant or eating too much sugar. Sometimes they have the inflammatory fallout from having an autoimmune problem. Sometimes they have an immune deficiency and some people don't have any auto, uh, any immune problem, but you really need to be working with someone that knows how to test and assess for those things. I like to do multiple tissue antibody testing. I like to do uh, lymphocyte immunophenotype testing. I got other videos that kind of explain that. So I'd be working with someone that not only knows that, hey, maybe sugar is bad for you, but that if sugar is flaring up your Meniere's, that's a clue that's telling you your Meniere's is unstable. That shouldn't be enough to do that. So there's something else going on. There's some other stuff boiling and bubbling and you need to get to the bottom of it. You need to work with a detective, a health detective that can look for all the different things because yeah, you might be insulin resistant uh, and maybe you need to be doing something actively for that diet, exercise, but also you may have other things going on that are working together synergistically kind of in a bad way. Could be food reactions, could be a barrier compromise. You may have nutrient deficiencies. So it's a little more complicated than trying to treat yourself. So you got to be working with someone that understands all that because it gets complex. So sugar is a trigger 
four Meniere's as he's attacking. It's a trigger because it is inflammatory because you get an insulin spike, you get this interleukin-6 along with it, and that can be enough to cause a flare-up in your ear. So I hope you found that helpful. Remember, we got other videos on the same topic, and uh, I'll see you next time.